All right, in this video, we are going to talk about multiplexers. Multiplexers. In short, we usually call it MUX. Okay, so the function of this digital uh, block is to uh, select binary information from the input lines and uh, deliver that to the output line. So it is, it is a digital logic circuit, digital circuit that selects binary information from one of many input lines and directs it to the output line. Okay, so it is a circuit that trying to pick up which input line will be uh, directed to the output line. Okay, that's kind of like a selector. It's like data selector. Okay, so if you draw a digital block, it looks like this. You have one, two, three, four, for example, it's I0, I1, I2, I3. So they are just digital signals as the inputs, right? It's going to that side. So this is a four to one MUX. It's picking up one of the four inputs and deliver that into the output line here. Okay, it's like a, you can, you can draw a little switch here inside to try to let people know you know, it's trying to select which one should be connected to the output. Okay, that's a function of that. And since you have four inputs, how do you let the block know which one you want to pick up? So four inputs, actually four uh, combinations and the four, uh, four lines, you need uh, two binary bits to uh, select which one you want to use. So you have S1, S0 as uh, selection bits. And uh, of course, you can have a two to one max, such I0, I1, it's a two to one max. And here's Y is the output. So if you have a two inputs to select, how many selection bit you will need? Okay, so you can think about it's just one. You only need one selection bit. So it, when this guy is zero, you select this guy. When, S, when this one is one, you pick up this one, all right? So you'll have enough signal to choose which one you want to pick up and deliver to the output. And of course, you can have a N to one max. I0, I1, and I N minus one. Here's Y. So then you need a, you know, depends on the number of N. So you need a how many selection bit to be able to pick up uh, all these options from the input. Okay, so now let's see what the uh, circuit looks like. What the circuit looks like inside a MUX. So be before we do anything, before we get the circuit, uh, we need to know the true stable first. Okay, so we have a true stable here, for example, for the 2 to 1 MUX. All right, so true stable, you have uh, the selection bit, which is S0, 0 or 1, just two options. And here's why. So when you have 0, you are delivering I0, whatever I0 is, can be 1, can be 0, doesn't matter. And then when S0 is 1, you are delivering I1 to Y. So that's a, that's a true stable. So this has a little bit uh, different form as the uh, two tables we introduced previously because we are not having a one or zero in here, but we have uh, a case here. 
I mean, this is another way to do it because we can make the logic function for this true stable a little bit simpler. So people, it's easier to, for other people to read. Only for max, all right? So now let's do it. So y equals to s0 bar i0, s0 i1. So that's the end logic in between, okay? So that's a logic function, and we can get a circuit from this logic function. So if we have I0, I1, and we have S, so in that case, you need to invert S0 to make a S0 to make S0 bar, and S0 bar, and here you got this uh, first one, and then S0 and I1. Right, that's the second one, and then you or them together. So that's Y. That's output Y here. So that's the final circuit. It's gonna be a two. If you put everything in the in the box, that's a two to one max, actually. You have I0, I1, you have a selection bit, you have a Y. That's it. That's a combinational logic, static logic function, uh, function block. Okay, we are going to build a simulation file in Spice later to to show you how to build this up. And we have to build up a, a, a inverter, AND gate, OR gate first, you know, before we can build up this conventional logic. And also it's gonna be useful for you guys to build a adder, you know, we already have the logic function using uh, using the gates, logic gates in the circuit previously, in the previous video. So you can use the same strategy to build up adder, uh, full adder, half adder in, LT spice and I will show you how to do the simulation to verify the logic for that block. Just telling people, hey, this logic is is running pretty well. It's working. Okay. So now this is, for, this is two to one max, and we have a true stable. We have a logic function. We have the circuit, and that's it. So now let's look at uh, the fourth four to one max, and we'll we'll stop over there. We won't do a to one. I will show you how to do it, but we won't do that. It's uh, it's too much, too too many gates over there. It's almost like you couldn't, um, you know, it's not worth it. If you know how to build it, the four to one, two to one, you should be able to do eight to one, sixteen to one, thirty two to one, you know, so on and so forth. It, we just don't want to waste time on that. Okay, now let's look at four to one max. So first of all, true stable, right? So you have four options. So you need a two. Selection beats there, zero 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 one one zero one one, and for zero zero you are picking up I zero I one I two I three. All right, so the logic expression will be as one as zero bar bar I zero or as one bar as zero I one or as zero uh, as one as zero bar. I2, S1, S0, I3. All right, so that's the logic expression. And we just want to uh, use that one to build a circuit. So now let's do it here. So for example, we have four, which is draw it in the two dimensions, so it's easier to wire everything up. It's not like we have a lot of uh, gates there, uh, looks in the mass. So we have all these signal lines here. And we have a selection bit, S1. Uh, we have uh, we have S1 not. We have S0. We have S0 not. And it just draw the line. There are signal lines here. And for S1 not, it just it just invert it in this way. Okay. So now for the first one, S1 not, S0 not, and I0. So they are unlogic. And I1, so you need a S1 not, S0, and I1 here, and logic. All right, and then S1, S0 not, and I2 here. Finally, S1, S0, 
and I3. And then you all everything together. Just assume we have such a four input OR gate. Yeah, it's not really hard to build. It's just, you know, usually we don't do a four input. We Instead, we use the two stages of OR gate together. It doesn't matter. So let's just show you how, how that looks like. So here right now it's gonna be a Y. That will be the final result for the four to one max. And you put everything into a box. It's gonna be a four to one max. Okay. So uh, I will show really quick. So you know, if you do a A to one max, the way to do that is, and we won't do the circuit since too many gates there. So you have, uh, you need a three bits as a selection bit. And you have one output. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. And so it's A to 1, so you have A uh, inputs to be selected. So I have I0, I1, I2, I3, I4, I5, I6, I7. And then just you know design the same, uh, get the logic function first, and then from the logic function to the gate level digital circuit. And uh, that's it. It's just a lot of labor work here. Uh, we we won't do it. We don't have time to run it. It's I think it's a waste of time. But we won't have this for the homework. Uh, but we will have two to one marks and four to one marks for the homework. Uh, and you need to be able to design all of them in LD Spice and do the simulation properly. So I'm going to show you how to build it uh, in LD Spice and also also at the same time how to make a simulation work for these digital circuits. So make sure you have this model file on the desktop since we are going to have all the circuits over there. And I will uh, start LD Spice. I'm going to start from scratch. Okay, so let you know that. Uh, remember that we have you know inverters, AND gate, and OR gate for the MUX. So let's build them up one by one. I'm going to start a new schematic. Since I'm going to run, we have a lot of uh, simulation to do. So I will uh, do this a little bit quicker. If you uh, miss that or you got lost, you just feel free to pause the video and you know go back and uh, rerun it until you can you can do it by yourself. It's, this is super important. You will do this throughout the rest of the semester for uh, for this online course. Okay. So I just click this one. I start a new schematic and I will save it as I'm going to save it on the desktop. I will, I will name it as inverter. And then I will start drawing the inverter. I press F2, uh, turn on the library, and I will find out NMOS and PMOS. Okay, NMOS and uh, PMOS as well. So for the PMOS, we know the sources should be on the top. So we control R, control R, and then we mirror it. Right? So that's the way you'll do it. And we rename it as P underscore one U. This one as uh, N underscore one U. So keep in mind, you are not changing M1, M2. They are just a label. But you want to change the model name here. And then you just need labels everywhere. You need a labels. I'm going to have a V high. Uh, v, yeah, I'm going to just put it here, 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 and uh, one here, not here. Sorry. Uh, right, right click, change it to V low, and right click, change it to V out. And I need a V in on this side. And I will connect the two inputs of the inverter and then connect the input here. That's a dream to dream, which is the output. I'll put it here. So, and then I will use a little hand here to drag it a little bit, stretch it a little bit. So I have a space for this PMOS body contact to contact to the, uh, as an unwell, connect to the highest potential of the circuit. Here's a P substrate being connected to the lowest potential of the circuit. So you're done for the, um, yeah, not done yet. So you need to define the dimension of the inverter. 
So let's give it one U and two U for the width, one U for the length. Uh, and we want to show it here. So control right click and then check. Control right click. And uh, yeah, we haven't defined the size yet. So let's do it. One U, two U. Right click, control right click and check. Uh, we are done for the inverter. That's it. Super simple, super uh, straightforward. And now we need a uh, symbol out of it. So we are going to press L to start drawing a line here and uh, make a triangle. All right, and then draw a circle like this and then move it to here, All right? Yeah, you wanna move it to snap to the grid here, probably. Yeah, let's do it like that, all right. So now you need an input. You need a power. You need a ground. You need an output. And there, there's no electrical uh, network yet. They're just lines, just physical lines. So you want to use P, V high, Keep in mind, it should be the same name as the one you are using in the in the internal circuit for this symbol. And below, and you need a V in, and you need a V out, right? And it's still untitled. Make sure you save it in the same directory as your internal circuit, as the inverter. Press Enter. So now it's, it's already saved. So your inverter is done. Okay, and now what I will do is I will uh, reuse this inverter uh, schematic file and I'm gonna make a AND gate out of it. So right, uh, double click to open that and uh, you need, uh, you, you are going to reuse this inverter anyway. So I'm gonna just delete that one and I will uh, need to build a NAND gate first and then invert it to make it AND gate. So I need uh, this invert uh, this transistor here. So to make a NAND gate, you need a two PMOS on the top and two of these guys at the bottom, at, at the bottom as well. So that's a NAND gate. And uh, I need to use F3 to connect these two drains of the PMOS and here to here, here to here, and here to here and here to here and i'm gonna ground it here uh, not ground so you are using below i'm sorry so you are gro grounding uh, you are going to ground everything outside of the chip so that's a chip right consider as an ic integrated circuit so i what i need to do i just need to copy below to we'll make it below here and i will drag this one a little bit i will stretch it a little bit and so we have space for these two guys to be shorted to the lowest potential of the entire circuit and then the same thing here uh, we are going to short these two guys and we are going to copy v high here and then connect that to here and then connect the body of the PMOS to the highest potential of the circuit. And we need a VA here. We need a VB here. F3 to connect that to your input, one of the input of NAND gate, and another input of the NAND gate, and rename it as VB. And then the output of the NAND gate should be connected to the inverter. So you invert it to make an AND gate out of it, right? So I think that's everything you need for an AND gate. So you want to save it as, so it's already AND gate here. So you don't need that anymore. That's the AND gate schematic. So you want to create a 
Okay, no, so it's right there. So I just need to create a new symbol out of it. I want to draw a line uh, here and to here. And we're making an on gate symbol, right? And then you need the arc. So the arc is not really easy to draw, but we can do it. Boom. And now we want to start from here and draw an arc. And then we want to move it to here. OK, perfect, I think. A little bit uh, imperfect here, but that is fine. So that's the AND gate, and we are going to draw a line here for VA. No, let's cancel that. Wait, uh, I want to cut it. Yeah, let's draw it. That's VA. That's VB. That's V high. No. Uh, let's, yeah, we need a V high, we need a V low, and we need an output. All right, so let's add pins to it. V A, V B, V high. V low and V out. Okay. And save it as to the desktop, call it AND gate. Just AND, A N D, capitalized. So you are done with AND gate. Now we are going to do the OR gate. So to the OR gate, we are actually going to, um, yeah, save. And we're going to reuse this guy. And we are going to call it OR gate. So because on gate OR gate, you are just changing the topology of uh, this part. So we are going to put the, let's just remove this wire first, and these ones as well. So what you need to do is, you want to put the N mouse in parallel instead of in ser series. And then you put the PMOS in series instead of put them in parallel. So I'm going to delete all these wires so, so they're not being messed up. Oh no. Go back. Oh no, don't do that for me. Right, I'm going to delete that, delete that. Why? No. Okay, because I, I point my cursor to the text. Okay, so now that works. And I will, yeah, let's do it. So I'm going to grab it, put, put it uh, one here, another one here, right? Hmm. Hmm. Just to leave all these wires. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right, so we are almost ready for wire everything up here. Okay, and now let's align them properly. All right, so now we need uh, to wire them up. So we can form a OR gate. And this guy to here. This guy to here. Uh, this guy to here. And now we need a, uh, to copy this guy, V high, and then wire it up to this. And 
and wire this up to here. Okay, and now we have this one as VA. Yeah, now let's don't do that. Let's use the line behind it as VA, but the line here as VB. Okay. Oh no. Here is VB. And here is inverter. So we invert it to, to an OR gate instead of a NOR gate. Okay. So that's the OR gate. So we need to, it's already saved, so we just need a symbol from it. And we need an arc first. So OR gate, we need an arc, right? So for example, something like this. Yeah, now after a single click, you know, it's still up to you. Right now it's asking you to define the arc, the size of the arc. You start from here and then stop the arc here and then you need uh, a different arc which is a circle so you want to start from here and stop at probably here all right and then because you want to snap this point to here further so that's why you want to start from here and then stop at wait hmm yeah no no so let's do it again here and this okay let's stop stop at here first stop at here no let's do it here yeah, and then I wanna from, draw from here to here. Boom. So that's the arc I I need for uh, for the for the OR gate. Then put it back here. Boom. So that's the OR gate, and not perfect, but it's good enough. And now we need uh, this one. And we need uh, this one, which is BB. And we need, so the problem is we do not have a point for the power, you know, but that's fine. So, uh, yeah, but that's fine. You can, you can see that I can draw it on the arc and stop at here. And then let's draw it from here and stop at here. And then I draw it from, yeah, so here's a problem. I couldn't, um, snap any of this part to to a point here so before i do anything let's just um move it so see the problem did you see the problem i don't know but let's move it a little bit and that will cause another problem because you can see now the problem is i if i draw it from here so the point the output is not being snapped to another of the grid point here which is a issue because finally in the future when you connect something to it you'll see there's a gap between the pane and the uh, symbol which looks pretty bad so we don't want to do do that so the problem is you can see in the beginning i didn't draw this one symmetrically for the middle point that's uh that's why this happens so we can fix it really quick it doesn't matter so let's redraw it if we do it here now stop at here and then we start from here and stop at here and then we move it back to the origin point original point 
And now we start drawing that uh, bigger curve. So we start from here and draw it. For example, like stop at here. And now we want to, if we want this, can we stop at here? Let's see. Let's see what this look like. It's uh, it couldn't uh, overlap to there. So see the orgate is not really, not really easy to to draw actually. Uh, now let's cut it. Let's do it again. Boom. Stop at. Let's do it here. Boom. Let's see if I can. Oh yeah, so this time it works. Boom. All right, finally. Move it back. Overlapped. Looks perfect. And the first input. First input. Hmm. We want to perfectly snap everything to the point. You know. That will make the curve looks better, much better. And this one from here to here. And power from here to here. Ground from here to here. And output from here to here. All right, perfect. Um, we want to save this at no. We have we haven't have a pin. Have all the pins. V high. Uh, wait. Did we type it correctly? No. V high. V low. V A. Um, v B. V out. All right, so let's save it as or on the desktop. So we are pretty much done for all these uh, all these gates being required by the mux. So let me double check with this one, see if I have anything wrong here. V high, which is spelled correctly, and uh, yeah, I want to save it. So I think they are they are all designed properly. So now I want to start my LT slice and start with a new schematic, and I will name it as Control S. You can save it to no, I don't want this name. I want to delete that. So I want to save it as to the desktop. I want to call it uh, to um, Max two two one for example is a two to one max and same okay so now press f2 um so now if you can if, if you can look at the notes yeah let's bring it back see what are what what's what what the two to one max looks like so it is actually Looks like this. Three signal lines, two AND gate, one OR gate, one inverter here. Yeah, so one inverter, two AND, one OR. So let's do it. Uh, find out your library, put an inverter, and go to the library, two AND gate, one, two, and go to the library, one OR gate. Okay? And the schematic looks like you want to move this uh, one here. So you have the circuit looks like this, right? <clears throat> so now let's wear everything up. So inverter in the front and two AND gate, one OR gate. Uh, so let's start wiring. So you have 
your inverter being connected to there. And uh, uh, so you have your signal. Let's make a signal first. So I O I zero, which is you know in the same line as this one. And I one. And S right. So this is S. That's I one. And you will you will have I zero being connected to here, and I one and I zero I to be inverted and go to this end gate and I one directly go to uh, this end gate and S will go to the other input of this end gate. And the final result from these two end gate are being ORed together to this OR gate, finally. And uh, definitely you need a voltage power source. Go to the regular uh, library and try to find out the voltage source here. Uh, and you need a three signal. And you need to so ground these voltages first since they are sharing the same ground. Delete that redundant one. And you need the pins. So VDD. So VDD is 5 volts early, and we are going to power up all of them and the same VDD and give them 5 volts. And then you want to copy, go to here, copy I0. So this one, that's the first signal line, the second signal line, and the selection line. And then, oh yeah, I've, we forgot one VDD for the inverter, don't forget that. And you need a ground for all these gates. And also you need uh, the final A, the output, let's call it Y. All right. And so the last thing, yeah, before the last thing, we, you know, before we design the simulation code, we need to give a signal to, to these things. Um, so what, what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and uh, give a pulse to I0 and I1. Uh, but so they are in different frequencies, so you can see which one are being selected at which time. So initially I have a zero, then I have a five for the on time, delay is zero. Uh, rise is one nanosecond, four is one nanosecond for the edge, and this is let's say one microsecond, and uh, that's one two point one microsecond for the period. So that's the first that's the first pulse, uh, which is I zero. There are just digital uh, pulses. So for I one, I want to give uh, also pulses, but uh, in different frequency. So you can tell which one is I1, which one is I2, uh, I0, one nano. So let's give two microseconds for the V on and 4.1 microseconds for the period. Okay, that's for I1. For uh, selection, selection, we are just, we just need a zero and one. You know, trying to pick up. So this one can be a higher frequency, or uh, you can do it separately. Don't worry about that. But you know, let's let's just uh, you know pick up two two of them, which is a one, uh, on signal and off signal. So we can see everything in one sim one single simulation. So it's zero, five. So for example, we are simulating for twenty microseconds, uh, then. Uh, you need uh, uh, 20 microseconds. You need uh, 10 microseconds for uh, the on time and probably 21 microseconds for the period. And now we need a simulation code. Don't forget to include the model file first and control enter to change another line. And we need a time domain analysis from zero to uh, 21 microsecond and Every uh, point one, 0 0.1 microsecond, we want to point a data over there. So that's it. Okay. I think we are done for here. Now let's run it and see if this will work.
Uh, if we see errors, we can fix it later. But now let's see. Okay, no errors, which is great. And it looks right. So now let's let me show you why this might be right. So I just click all the signal lines, uh, show you in the same curve, but we want to split them so you can see every single line clearly. We need four plot monitor plot panes, and we have the first signal, the first digital signal, the second digital signal, which has a different frequency, and we have a selection signal, which is just on and off. So now you can see that. So when we have selection B to B1, we are actually picking up I1. See, it's replicating I1, which is the lower frequency signal. And when you have S to B0, you are picking up I0. Whatever I0 is, it's going to select, it's going to pass I0 to the output. All right, so that's how we simulate the different inputs of a MUX in the same simulation. This is how you can do it. Right? So this strategy can be used for 4 to 1 MUX, can be used for adders, and so on and so forth. And we're going to show you how to do it later if we have a chance. But now this is the standard workflow for how to build up logic gates from transistors and then form a logic circuit out of it and do the simulation. This is a pretty complete workflow. And um, so from this point, you should be able to do a lot in the future. Okay. Hopefully you'll learn a lot for this lecture and uh, I, I'm going to have the simulation file and also the notes uploaded uh, beside this video. So um, thanks for watching this video. I'm going to see you in the next video.